PeachTools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Peach Tools, awesome to see you here again today. Another beautiful day here for a look outside, it's not raining, so any day that's not raining has got to be a good day, eh? <laughs> anyway guys, I've had a few emails from you fellas asking me what sort of MIG welder should you buy? Should you buy uh, one that runs on gasless wire, or should you buy one that runs with gas? Anyway, I've got an opinion if you're only just starting out to weld, and this is just my thoughts. I know what I'd be buying if I was first starting out welding again, but anyway, that's just my opinion. Anyway guys, I'll give you a few tips and tricks to what to look out for and uh, you can decide for yourself what's best for you. Anyway, let's get into it. So guys, if you decide that you want to go with gas MIG welding, well this is CO2, uh, it's not argon mix or anything, it's CO2, I use CO2 because it's cheap basically, you know me, cheapest chips Pete. But anyway, you're gonna, if you're going to do with gas, you're obviously going to need a gas bottle and you're going to need to use solid core wire. This solid core wire is about a third of the price of flux core wire. But there's a reason for that, of course, because you don't have to run gas with it. And then you've got to buy your gas bottle, and then you've got to refill your gas bottle, and then by the time you take it into account, this is probably just as cheap as running gas. But what welding process you choose, guys, is just going to depend on what sort of welding you're doing. Like if you're doing a lot of welding in your workshop and that sort of thing, gas is ideal because it doesn't blow away in the wind. But if you're going to be working outside and that sort of stuff, use flux core wire because we don't need the gas and the shielding gas doesn't blow away in the wind so in other words you can weld with this in the wind you can't weld with this in the wind or well, you can but it'll fall to freaking pieces <laughs> and that's not what you want to do is it guys nah mind you when you first start welding if you're anything like me as long as it's stuck together that was a good day you know we weren't even looking at how good it looked as long as it's stuck together it didn't fall to pieces when you jumped on it i thought that was pretty cool but that's just me so to give you an idea of the price of the gas and the gas bottles, guys, this one here comes up to about, well, just under my shoulder, as you can see. So it's quite a large one. It's an industrial one. Because when I first started welding, I was doing a hell of a lot of welding. I'd like weld like six or seven hours a day. So I needed a big capacity bottle. But if I was to do it now, if I don't do so much welding now, I'd, I'd actually change the bottle size. But like I say, this is a large bottle. The bottle itself cost me about $300, but it was second hand. And this is a steel bottle. It's not made out of aluminum. Um, like I say, I bought it second hand. Uh, it was about $350 or $300, $350. Now, every time I get this filled up with CO2, it cost me about $90. And if I was to get it filled up with an argon shielding gas mix, it would probably cost me $190, maybe even $220, something like that. And this is New Zealand prices. So gas is quite expensive here. So you've got to take that into account when you're thinking about what sort of welder you want to have and, and what you're doing with it. But I would actually, for the amount of welding that I'm doing at the moment, I would just go to flux core because you don't need to have the, the shielding gas and it's just a lot easier to cart around. And also the machines are a lot smaller as well and they take smaller rolls of wire. As you can see with this roll here, see so this is a huge 15 kilo roll of wire. It gets your feet on the ground. But like I say, when I was welding flat out, I was going through one of these a week, no problem whatsoever. But the uh, smaller flux core ones, they're a smaller 5 kg roll. 5 kg roll like that, you can even get them smaller with one kilo or two and a half pound. Uh, a lot of the little smaller MIGs just run the two and a half pound one. Now, if you're only welding like for an hour a week or something, and you're just tacking some shit together in your shed, that's all you need, eh? That's that's all I would use is this. So guys, we'll go and do a little bit of welding with both. We'll do a bit with a solid core and a bit with flux core, and I'll show you the difference what it looks like on the actual weld and whether it actually makes any difference if you're sticking your shit together. Yeah. Right guys, this is solid core wire, but I haven't turned the gas on. So this is what it's like welding with solid core wire without the gas. You can see that there guys. That is really, really ugly. If you have a look here guys, you can see it's got holes and it's pits and it's got all sorts of stuff on it and it doesn't, it won't, it's not even sticking properly, if you see what I mean, it just doesn't stick. Right guys, now I've turned the gas on, solid core wire with gas. How's that looking? You notice that's looking a whole lot better than before I turned the gas on. You notice this one up here guys is all porous, it's got all holes in it. This here isn't, because the gas is shielding it. When the gas is coming out of your MIG torch, that's what the nozzle here is for, it holds the gas. 
it puts a shield around your wire and it stops the air from getting in and contaminating it like this. Now if you notice with the gas shielded wire guys, there's nothing really to clean off. See there's nothing to clean off because it hasn't got any scale or anything on it. So now we'll do one with flux core and I'll show you the difference because with the flux core you're going to have to clean it up because it's got scale on top of it. See my dog there guys, you see him at the bottom there? Before I do this next test I'll show you, hold on. Come here, but good boy, come on. Oh. He likes to see what I'm doing in the garage, he's so dozy, normally dogs don't like welders but you know. Buddy! Here's my little mutley guys, he likes to watch me weld in the garage, sometimes he gets in the way and he gets burnt as well. Anyway, one way to learn, eh? <laughs> so guys, after that rude interruption, let's do a bead with flux core wire, no gas of course. It's also better guys, because you can take the shield off, and you can actually see where you're welding, which is also a bonus when you're first starting to learn. Yeah. What does that look like guys? As you can see we've got a lot of slag on top of it so what we need to do is belt that off. Geez you're a noisy shit Pete. Because we're using flux core guys you see we're getting a whole lot of slag on top whereas you don't when you're using gas here so let's clean them up. As you can see guys, started up here, it's starting to look a bit better down here when I'm just getting the feel of the gun. So there you go. So this is going to stick shit together. This with gas will stick shit together. That with no gas won't stick shit together. <laughs> so now you're saying guys, well you still haven't answered the question you silly old fool. What would be the best MIG welder for me to buy when I'm learning? Well, if I was to start all over again guys, I started with gas with solid core wire like this. And it was really hard to learn to weld to start off with. Plus it was the cost of the gas, it was the cost of the huge rolls of wire and all the rest of it. I'd go to this. I'd just go use the gasless wire to start off. You can buy a small machine, you can get them for about 200 bucks, 220 bucks for the actual machine. I mean you can buy your wire, it's cheap as chips. It's not quite as cheap as this like I said, but it's cheaper than buying gas and all the rest of the stuff that has to go with it. So anyway guys, that's my thought. So if I was to start all over again guys, the MIG that I'd buy to start off with when I knew nothing about welding would be flux core. Just a lot easier. You can weld in the wind, it's portable, you can take it anywhere. Anyway guys, same as usual, if you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day to the old get in the comments below, and I'll have some more useless information for you next time. Bye bye.